So today we are going to see some definitions and some theorem. So a function f from a to b and b1 is a subset of b. So here a is the domain and b is the codomain. Then with f inverse of b will be x belongs to a. That is for any element of b the inverse will be the element from a. That is why here x belongs to a such that f of x belongs to b1. That is nothing but here b1 will be the subset of b and f inverse of b will be all the elements x belongs to a where f of x will belongs to b1. Then this set f inverse of b is called as a free image of b1. That is for all the elements of b1. So what are the elements which are which are the elements of a which are associated with b1 will all belongs to f inverse of b. Then again next theorem is if f is a function from a to b and g is a function from b to a these are invertible functions then cof is a function from a to c and cof inverse will be f inverse composition or g inverse composition f inverse for the functions we are going to read from uh, right to left so it is g inverse composition f inverse so this is f composition g whole inverse so now how do we prove here is suppose f is a function from a to b which is invertible then we have a unique function g b from b to a with f o g is equal to i a that is if you start from f and go towards g you will get i a and if you start from g and go to f you will be getting i b if a1 a2 belongs to a with f of a1 equals to a2 so since this is invertible then this function has to be one to one so therefore f of a1 will be equal to f of a2 then g of f of a1 will be equal to g of f of a2 or gof or uh, if you do uh, reading from the right it is g o f uh, f o g of a1 is equal to f o g of a2 so now we know that f o g that is f o g is equal to i a so which follows that a1 is equal to a2 because we know that this is a identity function therefore a1 will be equal to a2 therefore f is one to one now suppose b is an element of b that is it's an element of the codomain then g of b will be an element from a that is g is a function from b to a so it is mapped to some element of a so f of g of b will exist since g o f that is you read from right to left in the function will be equal to i b so we have b is equal to i b of b which is nothing but g o f of b will be equal to f of g of b therefore f is on to so on to is nothing but every element of b will be having some pre image so we have shown that the if the function is invertible then it is one to one and on two. Next is conversely suppose f is a function from a to b is bijective. So bijective here it is one to one and not here it is invertible. So you have another function g from b to a that is the meaning. So f is one to one and on two. So here since f is on two for every b belongs to b there exists some a belongs to a with f of a equals to b that is every element of b should have some pre image in case of bijective because it is on to so now we define a function g from b to a by g of b is equal to a that is for some element in the b i have a function g and if i apply that i will get some element of capital a which is a here so where f of a is equal to b so which yields that there is a single unique function and the only problem could be that if g of b is equal to a1 which is not equal to a2 which is equal to g of b because f of a1 is equal to b is equal to f of a2 because it is one to one but this situation cannot arise because f is one to one therefore g is such that f o g is equal to ia and g o f is equal to i b so we find that f is invertible with g is equal to f inverse so this is the proof so that is if f is a function from a to b and g is a function from b to a are invertible then this condition has to be satisfied so this is important so your f o g will be a function from a to c 
and uh, f o g inverse will be equal to g inverse composition f inverse. So this theorem, this statement is very important. So some examples. Suppose f one is a function from R to R, that is real number to real number, defined by f one of x is equal to x square. So this we know that this function is not on to because every it is a uh, not one to one because uh, you have some real numbers where f of x is equal to x square because if you take negative integers as well as positive integers so both will be mapped to the same uh, integer which is a uh, positive integer so it is not uh, invertible since it is neither one to one nor on to because here it is uh, in this case it is not one to one but if the function is 0 to plus infinity that is inclusive of 0 and plus infinity to 0 to plus infinity which is defined by f2 of x equal to x square this is invertible with f2 inverse f2 f2 inverse of x is equal to square root of x so this is a invertible because it's a one to one as well as on to to say that the function is a invertible you have to check whether this function is one to one and on to because here the numbers are only positive numbers so only positive numbers uh, will be having the images because in this case both the negative as well as positive numbers are in the domain and range but in the range only the positive numbers are having the pre images that's why uh, it is not on to as well as it is not one to one because uh, every uh, element will not be having a distinct image so this function is not one to one and on to whereas if you consider here it is one to one as well as on to therefore it has an inverse and that inverse is square root of x so these are some of the exercises which we can just see so first one let the function f r to r defined by f of x is equal to 4x minus 1 for all x belongs to r then show that f is 1 to 1 so when you are asked to show that f is 1 to 1 you take two elements from the domain so here yes, suppose x1 and x2 belongs to r such that f of x1 is equal to f of x2 so if you are showing that if f of x1 equal to f of x2 and if x1 is yeah, this if it implies that x1 equals to x so your task is done so here f of x1 is nothing but 4x1 minus 1 and f of x2 is nothing but 4x2 minus 1 so which implies that uh, x 4x1 equals to 4x2 that is x1 equals to x2 therefore f is 1 to 1 so this is how you have to prove that the function is 1 to 1 if you are able to show that if f of x1 is equal to f of x2 implies x1 is equal to x2 then it is 1 to 1 so next one if f is equal to 5 to 6 3 and g is equal to 2 5 3 6 then write f o g so f o g or here g o f so it is nothing but how do we do here is just uh, i will uh, show how to do this so you start from so this is f of g of so suppose you take 5 so this is nothing but f of g of 5 so g of 5 we don't have so this is i f so this is a 6 this again g doesn't have so this is also 5 then f g of 2 it is nothing but f of g of 2 it is nothing but f of g of 2 is nothing but 5 f of 5 is nothing but 2 so you get 2 comma in this and similarly for 3 3 goes to 6 and 6 goes to 3 so therefore 3 comma 3 so when you are doing for this 
you start from G and then go to F. So you always for the function you do it from right to left. You start from G for any element that is 2 goes to 5, 5 goes to 2. So 2 comma 2. Then 3 goes to 6, 6 goes to 3. So therefore 3 comma 3. So that's how you have to do this. Next. Let f is equal to, f is a function from r to bar, r to r be a function which is defined by f of x equal to 4x minus 3 for all x belongs to r. Then write f inverse. So given that f of x is equal to 4x minus 3. So let us say that this f of x is nothing but y. Then 4x minus 3, 4x will be equal to y minus y plus 3. So we have transferred this 3 to here. So now this x will be equal to y plus 3. So y plus 3 divided by 4 will be your x. So therefore f inverse of y will be equals to f inverse of y will be equal to y plus 3 by 4 which is nothing but if you replace uh, huh, this is a uh, x this is x plus 3. So for y it is uh, x plus 3 by 4, for x it is y plus 3 divided by 4. So this is your inverse of x. So if I want to find the inverse of some element here, this is the procedure. So you consider this as uh, you, you find for x and then replace uh, this x will be equal to y plus 3 by 4. So y plus 3 by 4. 4. So, this is uh, f inverse of x. Actually, this is y correct. This is f inverse of x. So, therefore, f inverse of x is equal to y plus 3 divided by 4. Is the binary operation defined? on z that is set of integers by m star n is equal to m minus n plus m n for all m n belongs to z is commutative. So here answer is no since 1 2 belongs to z and 1 star 2 is equal to 1 minus 2 plus 1 into 2 which is 1 whereas if you consider 2 star 1 it is 2 minus 1 plus 2 into 1 which is 3. So here 1 is not equal to 1 star 2 will be not equal to 2 star 1. So, it is not commutative. Next one, if f is a function given by 5, 2, 6, 3, g is a function given by 2, 5, 3, 6, then write the range of f and g. So, the range of uh, f here is, this is a, a domain 5, 6 and this is a range is 2, 3. And therefore, the range of f is 2, 3 and the range of g is 5, comma 6. Next one, if a is a, a is a set containing a, b, c, d and f is a function given by a, b, ordered pair a, b, b, d, c, a, d, c, show that f is 1 to 1 from a on to a. And here you can observe a is mapped to b, b is mapped to d, c is mapped to a, d is mapped to c. So every element of uh, a that is b has a unique inverse so that is a. D has an inverse B, A has an inverse C and C has an inverse D and find F inverse. So F inverse will be obtained by interchanging the elements of the ordered pair. So it is B A, D B, A C and C D. Thank you. We will continue in the next video.